Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Kia and here is Akimu. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna create a realistic prototype of 360 degree viewport, which is going to show the car and the vehicle from different angle and perspective to the user. And also user can actually interact with this component, really turn the car around and see the car from different perspective. If you're interested and you want to know how to create such a component, please get sure to watch this video until the end. And if you are new here, Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and watch the other videos as well. Now without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by importing the images that I have from the car. I have 180 degree view from the car. I import them into the Figma and then I organize and try to keep them in the order in the canvas as well in the uh, layer list. I want to get sure that all of them are in the same order. I copy paste uh, all the images and scale them in another way. Basically, I mirror them in order to create 360 degree view of this car. Again, I get sure all are in the same order, basically in the layer list. And then I click all of them or select all of them and rename them based on the uh, number. And also I add car slash at the beginning of name of each layer. And again, I select all of them and create a component uh, from each one. And this way, later when we go to the asset list, we have this category car, and then we will see all of our images are available there. Now, when I import one of the assets into my canvas, I can easily change the image of the car from the properties panel. Next step, I'm going to work on the final uh, component. I just add the component that we create from the car to the canvas and also one proper background that I found it from Mercedes-Benz uh, official website. Now it's time to create a button which later on user will interact with it in order to rotate the car. I just do a bunch of uh, basic stuff like adding a shadow uh, border radius and also I use the fader icon plugin in order to uh, add a chevron icon to my button. I just make it a bit thicker and also change the color to red that make it more obvious in my scene. I rename uh, the button uh, based on this principle that first is the component name and the uh, uh, state uh, name and also the type. Now let's work a bit more on the uh, button component. I want to create two different variant of it, which is going to be left and right, uh, or basically the type of the button and also the hovering states. So basically I just copy paste it and um, change the background color to red and the icon color to white. And then also rename the default to uh, hover, which is indicating the state of the button. And then I create the component sent from uh, these four buttons. I changed the name of the properties in order to manage my project, one to state and the other one to type. Now it's time to use the prototyping tools in order to create our interaction. I just want to have a hovering interaction and I will put the animation type to animate or smart animate. I do the same thing for the second variant, which is uh, the right button. Again, while hovering and uh, smart animate. The button component is ready. Now I just need to add the button uh, to my main component from the asset list by drag and drop from there uh, and just adjust the type of it. And then I try to align it and uh, yeah, decide uh, how would be the distance between the border and the button from left and right. In the next step, I group all of them and then rename the component uh, to uh, 360 degree view slash uh, the G3, which is the car name and a slash uh, one, or I mean, based on the number of the image here, slash 16. And I then copy this uh, uh, layer and change the image or switch the image of the car to the next number. I do this process for the rest of the 32 or 33 image that I have. Uh, and as you can see, I'm just creating the rotation effect uh, by just uh, copy paste uh, the uh, element that I have and switching the image.
After I finish this process, I select all of the layer that I made and I create a component set for these uh, layers. Again, I, I just uh, rename the properties in order to have better uh, project management. So the first one is the car name and the second one is basically the rotation type. The next step would be creating the user interaction. So I use the prototyping feature, select the right button, connect it to the next layer or uh, let's say variant of the component and then uh, set, it, um, set the type of the interaction to the unclick uh, and the smart animation. I just keep the uh, animation duration really short because I want to create kind of like an instance uh, effect. I do the same thing for the left button, but uh, I just connect it to the previous layer. I do this process for all of this, uh, let's say, variant of the component that I have. Um, just the point is um, I need to connect the right button from the last uh, variant to the first one in order to create the loop effect and also the left button from the last one to the first one. In this way, our component is ready, basically. So I just create a frame, I rename it to preview, because I'm going to use this uh, frame uh, uh, in order to see my preview. I drag and drop the final component that we made uh, into the frame, uh, try to just uh, resize the frame in order to have a better framing and balancing. Here I'm gonna actually create a flow. Um, basically it's not so necessary for a small project, but in a big project it's easier to manage your prototype by uh, creating the uh, different flows for different views. And then I play my uh, prototype and as you can see, uh, the component is working pretty well and it's uh, kind of simulating the 360 degree rotation of the car. We see this component so often uh, in different uh, car manufacturing websites and by adding uh, some more uh, user interface elements to the scene we will make this element and component even more uh, realistic and that's the result as you can see you see how it's easy to create some realistic prototype in a Figma based on the features that Figma and the other prototyping tools actually provide the designer. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.